we did a talk with hunters yesterday and we're about to do one right after this because i before i could even post a youtube video they just changed and fixed literally everything we talked about so. uh, must be nice huh <laughs> all right we're good all right you both are here all right cool so what i wanted to do with you guys today uh the chat knows who you all are public is the esteemed shadow priest lord of theory crafting and the community and Rivens is Liquid Guild's resident shadow priest. So what we are focusing on today is I asked both of them, this is gonna be a much shorter class conversation than normal. And the purpose of that is to not have this be something that's 45 minutes, but just condense it all the way down to where the stuff that is the most important is getting the most feedback. Recently, the priest dev, although it seemed like when he posted it, was kind of like held at gunpoint, like, hey, you should post something and just let them know you're working on it. Cause there's a lot of people that are wondering what's going on with all that. Uh, but he did post that Shadow Priest changes were coming. And more importantly, in the season four notes, they actually had some rhetoric that made you think that they actually are hard understanding that like basically all Shadow Priests hate the design of Searing Nightmare. At least that's how I interpreted it, which is like really good news for going forward. And obviously we'll change the tree a bit. But I've asked them to bring their top five changes uh, one at a time and they obviously can both talk about each other's decisions on things that should be changed or looked at in the shadow tree focusing on the most important things there's probably way more than five like there are in most trees but just trying to get the really big stuff out of the way so we can make small tweaks later all right who would like to go first yeah i, th I think i'm gonna start and can i can i share my game because i i, I want to do something in game because i have i have one change that i want to make and like talk about more than five because i think it's such a sure uh, let me let me maximize this. Focus Shh. your camera, and then you just share your screen instead of your cam, and it should work. I think I'm doing now. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm looking at. Who knows? Oh, here we go. Never mind. Okay, I'm a technical wizard. I figured it out. All right, you you have room to show us everything you need to show us. The the thing I want to focus on is basically some of the decisions behind the uh, just the core priest stuff that I, that has been a problem through the entirety of Shadowlands and will continue to be a problem in in Dragonflight. It's primarily the relationship between Void Eruption and specifically Void Bolt and Power Infusion. Okay. Because what this has done for the class is basically make it so you cannot have a spec that's any good on AoE, which is by far the biggest problem with Shadow Priest, this, this expansion. Like, it, it just sucks in AoE. And then you have talents like Sir Nightmare to try and compensate, and everyone hates it. So what can you do about it? You know, well, suggestions have been said, like, you know, make apparitions good, make this good, make this good. Yeah, you that, that is by far the best, you know, obvious decision. But because of power infusion and void eruption, you cannot have it be balanced. And I'm just gonna like hit these dummies and I'll show you why. So okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do my rotation here and I'm gonna this is like a five target, whatever, you know. There's also on retail, but I'm playing the same talents and all the core stuff that you have on on Dragonflight, so it doesn't matter. Okay. But as you can see, like every global I'm pressing is spawning apparitions. Every single one. And it extends the dust and everything permanently, and I'm just I'm just owning. This is fine. So I'm just going to do a 40 second window with and without uh, void form basically. And uh, just to show the difference in details. But just pay attention to the gameplay where like every global bones operations and everything is just great. And I'm like this damage is actually not bad. Even you know, it, it's it's fine. But the moment you fall out of void form, it, it's starting to get real shit. If you look at the damage breakdown, we can see that it actually isn't like, like this is a pretty healthy damage breakdown because you know, VT on top, sure, it's not damage, but this is also, we, we want this to be good. And there's a lot of talents in Shadowlands that interact with this. For example, the Idol of Yogg-Saron or whatever it's called, that summons a pet when you summon 50 apparitions. Normally, it would have like over 200 here. I've seen 250, 220. There's 195, so it's on the lower end, but there's a ton of apparitions, is my point, inside okay. that cooldown window. And you can see that like my single target spells, the rank plague is pretty high up there as well. And uh, yeah, it's like, it's fine. So if we do the same thing now, I'm going to do it without... Uh, PI because of, of cooldown, but I'm just gonna do the same 40 second window. Where without I void just form or PI or just with yes. void form? Just, just just without void form at all. I'm just gonna do bender. Okay. So here we go. I'm dotting everything up and I'm doing this thing. Notice I'm, I'm pressing mines there and mind play whatever. Getting Okay, I'm getting prox there, whatever. But I'm already redotting, right? I cannot keep going because I gotta redot. Whereas in void yeah. form, you don't have to worry yeah. about that because I mean, of the. I'll, I'll, I'll explain after, but like just pay attention to the global. So I can, again, pressing mines there. Full channeling mines here, yeah. Yeah, just 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 channeling, and then oh, those are falling off. Got to be dot. So forty seconds have passed. Let's see. You're doing half oh. the damage. And most more notably, half the apparitions. So I did this a bunch of dummies already. I can do go again with with PI, but you will find that it'll it'll be hardly higher. It will be like um, twenty higher at most apparitions. 
while the other one would like literally double with void form. Okay, so what's so, the what's the take then for, for yeah, this? Yeah, so, so why this is a problem is the fact that you cannot have this window outside of void form be any good because inside of void form with the current tuning and talents, it'll just be so unbelievably cracked that it, 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 it there's, there's so much anti-synergetic things there. You know, when you come with these two spells together and everything summons operations and everything is prima dotted, you cannot have it be good outside of it because inside of it, it just, it just way too powerful, right? So Im imagine the, sh uh, the talents in, uh, in the expansion where it summons a pet when you summon 50 apparitions. You would literally summon four of those in the same window. So, that you so that you are you one. saying are you saying that void form is too strong, or are you saying that and that's why they can't buff shadow priest outside of void form? I'm, 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 saying, I'm a little confused. So I'm, I'm saying that void bolt is a problem because it it extends dust and everything. Like you, again inside void form, every single global you press summons apparitions, and everything is prima dotted. So outside of void form, like I mean, you see this gameplay where like every, I'm just shitting out apparitions on every global, and all my globals are really really strong, right? When you don't remove when you, when you have this rotation that is without Void Bolt, you're suddenly able to tune a lot of the stuff that is important for Shadow AoE. So you can actually make this window good. You can make the window that you're not inside Void Form be strong. Like, this can actually be, be good damage, because you don't have the Void Bolt that is just going to fucking destroy everything, right? I not, think not... maybe to boil it down into two points, just from my perspective. Yeah, I'm, I'm someone who I think understands the game at like a pretty high level, and the po the purpose of this is to give feedback to like the Shadow Dev, and I'm sitting here wondering at the same time, like, in a way, phrasing at the beginning of like what you're trying to go after and solve is like, it just needs to be more concise. I, I like, like, like. I, mean, I, I, I can say that. Like, I can say that. Okay, just remove void bolt. I'm just trying to get across why because it's like remove you know, void bolt is the is the yes. Take. Th like that that is the take because it's like you can solve this problem of, of shadowy by like three different things. You can make all the talents and everything of the design like auspicious spirits and stuff work together with PI and void form, but that is like. It is so complicated, and I, I don't even know where you would start this process. You can also, you know, look at PI, but they're said not going to do that, which is fine. Or okay. you can look at Void Form, which is primarily Void Bolt. The fact that you're just like pulling apparitions every single global, and everything is prima dotted and, and whatever. It's like you cannot have it be too good because inside that window, it's just far too powerful. So ahead, maybe Papa. let me let me restate this just so maybe it's clear, right? Yeah. It's really hard to buff and balance the spec that becomes too good inside the cooldown window, right? Because any small change you make gets magnified incredibly in void form, right? Which becomes a balancing nightmare. So what Rivens is saying, which I think could use a lot of experimenting, I'd be interested to see what Blizzard comes up with, right? If you remove some of the comp components and pull back a little bit on void form, you can now afford to buff things like dots or apparitions or other parts of the core spec without things getting out of hand, is basically what he's saying. Um, because, yeah. you know, and, and we, we can't really mess with power infusion very much because the other two specs have it. I think along the lines, he's also saying part of the issue is that Void Form's a minute and a half cooldown that has issues with syncing up with all the rest of our kit, right? So they could also mess with the cooldowns of our things to line them up better. But yeah, basically it's kind of a mess, I think is what he's saying. Uh, so no, yeah, it, basic, it, basically Void Bolt's power level's too high in Void Form. And well, just, it's, not, it's not necessarily too high. It's just, it's just the fact that it, it doesn't allow the spec to be viable on AOE because if when you have it in game in the current iteration that window is just so immensely more powerful than outside of it that it just cannot make this class good because uh, if it is any decent outside of it it just becomes so insanely broken inside that window right void bolt is a problem but you don't necessarily have to remove void form like you can still have this button be something interesting you know it's not just hey get rid of the spell you can have it be many example you apply it and everything that's hit by void eruption gets break touch and pain or you get you get cast while moving for 15 seconds by the void form. There's a lot of things you can do to make it fun at the same time while improving the core design of Shadow Priest. So if you make this change by basically getting rid of void bolts and changing how void form works, a lot of the problematic talents in the next expansion become fine. Like Shadow and Prism, a lot of people are proud of that. And I, I highly encourage you to just go on a dummy and just play without void form and just do your normal rotation. You will find that. Shadow from Prism actually works kind of fine. I, th I think a lot of these problems just boils down to Void Bolt kind of being very destructive. Like, All right, cool. So Void Void Bolt. Let me hide myself here. I think that's... I had to... And then I'll put you guys over back to the left. All right, we'll probably swap and do one at a time. So we'll go and do public. Public with uh, your first thing you think needs to be looked at. Can be gameplay, can be talent tree related. Yeah, so I mean, first thing, and we covered it at the top, so it's going to be pretty quick. It's just Searing Nightmare, right? And they've admitted this is a problem, but... Honestly, like this is the one biggest thing because 
playing Shadow, even if you make other changes to the spec, the AoE rotation is the worst probably thing in the game. And if everyone has ever played Shadow in Dungeons, you're just sitting there, Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare, on repeat for like the whole pull. And it's just the least fun thing in the game. Uh, so yeah, and it's really important to the community, I think, they can't just remove the spell because right now it's like 40% of our damage in keys, right? So they need to rework it or if they do remove it, they need to put damage elsewhere in the kit, uh, which like Rivens was mentioning earlier, doing that, they need to be careful because uh, it's kind of volatile uh, based on void form, right? So it also yeah, seems like pretty... a decent bit of your all's not massive target AOE, but like five to eight, like he was just looking at involves also misery dotting ads and extending it in some situations. And if you are going to have whatever replaces Searing Nightmare or rework Searing Nightmare on the same choice node. Those two things are like kind of competing with each other in a way, correct? Yeah, exactly. And I think part of the issue is that the, our dots currently aren't super valuable insofar as they kind of just unlock the rest of our damage with our mastery. So they kind of have an issue where it's like, we feel like we really need to spread our dots quickly to do anything. Um, but they could accomplish something differently if they just buffed dots but made them more you know, a harder to spread, right? So there's kind of a balancing act there. All right, Searing Nightmare. And that, that is something, again, probably the best news. I think it was in the yeah. season four post yesterday, if I can like scroll and find it real quick. Yeah, so they're buffing Mind Seer by like 30%, uh, Shadow Crash by a little bit, and Searing Nightmare as well, going into season four, which is probably a little bit late, but yeah, Shadow definitely needed some help if you at all want to play Keys on live um, before Dragonflight, so. Sweet. All right, Rivens, what is your number two? I was actually just gonna talk about the one thing, the Void Bolt thing. That's all I. That's all I care about. All I mean, you cared yeah. about today was talking about Void Bolt. Okay, and then that's fine, no, no, and we can just. That's fine. It, Good. It's just like that is the single most impactful thing. I mean, I don't want to get back into it, but it's like starting with that, you just. You make the core design good, and then you look at tuning afterwards, right? You're, you're so basically think... looking at Void Bolt as just like this massive design block in the middle of this class, yes. where remaining the way design, it is. Design block, and, and more importantly, tuning block. Like it's it's so impossible to tune Shadow Priest the way it, it functions right now. You, you okay. Just, yeah, especially in AoE, as I said. All right, nice. All right, well, then uh, we will just have him go through his, and uh, we'll kind of focus like the Void Bolt thing on its own separate thing, and yeah. we'll we'll continue. Then you can obviously comment on everything he is commenting on. So this can be general uh, priest gameplay wise, general class tree, uh, shadow priest spec tree. Your second thing, public. Yeah. So the second thing, and I also made a forum post about this a couple of days ago, is just the build diversity in our trees, like pretty bad right now so the, the the biggest example of this you can actually pick 19 of the current 21 talents in shadowlands all at one time in the dragonflight tree and i think just saying that out loud and like pick any spec in the game that give them sounds access insane. to it just sounds messy right and like overwhelming and just like just weird right and there's a lot of actives thrown in your, in your way in the tree right now like you have to pick shadow crash or you have to pick void torrent to get down to the idle talents and so I think those, yeah, and you're just kind of stuck with this amalgamation of spells that were always meant to be choices, you know, but now you get access to so many of them. And yeah, this is also a problem because there's a lack of pathing in our tree. Like if you look at like the Ellie Shaman tree or a couple other of the spec trees, there's a lot more lines and paths. The, it's very you... noticeable in the middle. Like, and this yes. is actually something that I think is one of the things I would guarantee is going to be changed about Shadow is if you look at what's been changed across all of classes, excluding Hunter, because that one's had like just exponentially more changes than any other class by far and for different reasons. But the pathing is something that has been changed or updated on all trees and is very noticeably the main thing on new trees. Even when some trees have issues, the pathing on them is usually much better than the first couple that they released. And Priest is right. no exception to that. Like if this, if this Priest tree was released last week, even if it had a lot of the similar issues with what you would pick, you would have connections from the left to the middle you'd have connections from the middle down to the left you'd be able from ancient madness to be able to select everything in the bottom tree or something like it would just look different than it looks right now it, so i would definitely it, expect it'd be clearer like. right like it's kind of all over the place like the evoker tree does a great job of this if you look at it, it's like oh the left side is like the red spells and the right side is the blue spells and you can weave in and out of the middle to combine them together shadow doesn't really have any of those themes in there which just kind of makes it inelegant you know like there's a vague theme of like maybe some aoe stuff on the left side maybe single target on the right side but you know you can't weave anything together and once you're on a path you're kind of stuck there if you want to get to an idol just of how many points you have to invest to finish it so yeah that makes complete sense problem number three yeah so this is something and i've loved seeing the new trees come out because it feels like shadow's like uniquely you know plagued with this issue is 
We have too much utility in our spec tree. I actually took a quote from Ian in the forum post, but Ian was like, yeah, you, if any player has to choose between utility or throughput in their spec tree, they're just going to pick throughput, right? Shadow has 10 nodes in our spec tree that don't increase our damage, which is like seven or eight more than any other spec that's been released so far. So yeah. which basically means like, oh yeah, you get to pick between, pick one. Do you want silence? Do you want dispersion? Do you want vamp embrace? Do you want ex increased any of that? You can pick one out of those 10 without losing damage. <laughs> it's pretty feels bad. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, this is definitely something as well as things have gone on where more class trees, uh, you guys are one of like the half of the class trees in the game that have throughput in your main tree. One thing you're definitely noticing with the new classes where their capstones and their general class tree are focused on utility. They yeah. shift all their utility there and they gave new options for like other specs to have things that other specs have like shamans getting access to spirit walk or gust of wind or stuff like that and it's near the bottom of the tree that is something where once you commit your general tree to having dps capstones that doesn't exist and with shadow having multiple insanely powerful abilities that are not available to their counterparts which is actually something really rare it'd be the difference of like ellie shaman having astral shift but then enhance and resto just don't right to where that's just an extra button on your tree except there's just like four abilities like that uh, and yeah, and like Disc Priest weird. would love to have Silence or, you know, Dispersion even, and you could even combine Vamp and Brace to being something that Disc and Shadow both use, right? Like, I don't know, they, there's a lot of opportunity there, I think, to to fix that, so. It's like, yeah. it's like very silly that the healer specs have Shining Force in their spec tree. Like, is there really a yeah. problem of Shadow having Shining Force? Like, that makes no sense. I think the Priest is one of the specs that is getting hurt the most by these and i'm sure you guys know exactly where i'm going where these trees are being designed for both pve and pvp at the same time for sure. I, I actually think if only pv obviously this is not the case but if only pve was in mind i could almost guarantee that something like uh disperse not ve obviously but like disperse and silence would be available in the class tree because like it would not push priest over the, the healer priest over the top to have dispersion it would actually like you're talking about a class that is guaranteed going down like almost all the way to the bottom of the tree just to get a small damage reduction on fade, right? Like no other class has to think like that. Yeah, it's so, it's so disgusting. Like 10 yeah. 10% DR in a tree. Look, you compare to shaman and it's just And it's and it's, it's like and, and it's and it's it's like you have to take it. And like this yeah. this node on any other tree for those two specs would be like, eh, you know, if I happen to go through it, it's whatever. <laughs> but like, you know, so that's just like super powerful. So yeah, I would definitely like the utility in Shadow to be, it's hard to make it baseline because anything that's baseline well, is available to all specs, right? But but they could make it a different version, right? So like, you don't have to put the maxed out silence version in the class tree. You could just have it be a 24 second interrupt in the class tree and in Shadow at the very top of our tree, you can spec into it to make it a silence again, right? So they, they could have like improved versions of mm -hmm. on the shadow tree and Definitely. just like the base like core of the spell in the in the class tree, right? If they if they want to balance it between PvP and stuff. So Yeah, cool. So the fourth one is just Sanguine Teachings is just not fun to play with. And I'll just say in general, like this has actually showed up I think in three spots on the tree in general. For disc and holy they have the same thing but with smite damage. Like I don't think it's fun to have more damage while shielded, like that just as a mechanic, I don't think is engaging, um, especially in a world where Shadow Priests are constantly killing themselves with Shadow Word Death. It's just not, I don't know, none of this is really <laughs> sustainable or fun to play with. And it's, you have to invest three points into this to get two of our idols that are going to be probably the most unique in the game. So, uh, yeah, yeah that which look really cool and they're new as well. So it's like, it's right. kind of gatekeeping you from seeing that. I, I definitely think the pathing at the bottom will be there. Dude, rest in peace to Sanguine Teachings being my low hanging fruit that I brought up in like every class <laughs> discussion of being yeah. the like worst tree. I think Hunters overtook it when the survival node had the one yard per melee range three point node to where I <laughs> yeah. like, it, like Sanguine Teachings lost its spot as the thing I constantly brought up as just like, what is this shit? So, and it's yeah. like, and it's so much, it's 15% damage to all of our dots. It's actually, I think it's the only talent we have in the, the tree that buffs Devouring Plague as well, which is also a different, like that's a separate problem, but it's like, it's, yeah, it's kind of silly. I, th okay. I think it's worth noting on Sanguine Teaching Store as well, is that it's one of these talents that I, you can change this at any point and it's, it's gone, but like whatever, it doesn't affect the class, right? Like you can just tune this any point. You well, know, I think but... I think something it brings up though is is dot damage, and maybe that's yeah. uh, before we get onto our fifth thing. Can you just kind of talk about the major shift that happened between Shadow between uh, BFA and Shadowlands? Obviously, it got a like decent design change, but also one major change that was not just Shadow Priest, but was uh, expansion wide. Every class in the game had their dots nerfed to where something like Starfall 
has never been as dominant in multi-target situations because it's quite literally the only ability that does that much spread out damage in the entire game. It's like its own niche. That did not used to be the case with Dots. Uh, Shadow Priest always used to run into an issue where they were really, really good at single target. And for that to be the case ever, if there was ever a second or third target because of how powerful their Dots were, they were just the best spec in the game for too long. What would you guys like to see changed about Dots, Shadow Priest specifically, in terms of your all's playstyle relative to other classes in the game? Yeah, so, so that, that's kind of what I wanted to show on the dummies as well, is the fact that on a rotation of five targets, you saw that I was constantly casting Dots. You know, I was re -dotting. And so when you have a lot of targets, there's a some sort of soft cap in the cleave it can do. Because you have to read those all, all constantly. And you have like these windows where you, you dot everything up, then you summon a bunch of repetitions, and you go back to this read dot. It's not just going to scale completely out of control. Don't have Void Bolt, right? Because everything is not perma dotted and everything summons apparitions. So I think, not to bring up my point again, but if you go down that line, I think balancing dots becomes so much easier than uh, if you don't. Yeah, Void Bolt is just another design block into making dots better again because of the interaction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when, whenever you give us easy ways to refresh and spread dots they inherently have to then nerf the dot because it's like okay well clearly you'll get too powerful right if you can spread it and our dots have been nerfed like at least 30 40 percent over the last expansion and a half or so and they and that's that's not an accident right they're doing that because you know players have figured out how to use misery and then we get searing nightmare and it's like well being able to spread all of your dots that fast we have to nerf them otherwise you get out of control so they've gone too far in the direction of dots are somewhat meaningless now and people are like, oh yeah, I just make misery baseline. My dots are useless anyway. I don't really care about them, right? And and shadow and balance druid and you know they're not really dot specs anymore. Like shadow's a builder spender spec now. It's just with different names, right? That that look like old dot spells. <laughs> so all right. And I think it's like 15% of our current damage is shadowed pain and vampiric touch on single target, which is a like a husk of what the spec was, you know in expansions past so yeah i think that, i think they just need to kind of rein it back in there's a middle ground there that i think that's fun um we're just a little too far in the other direction yeah so. makes sense and, and it's also something that isn't necessarily specific to priests like they definitely nuke yeah. everyone's dots at least well i mean obviously affliction still does a, a ton of its damage in dots but it's just way more single target based than it ever was multi-dotting as it used to be i think we accidentally went into your fifth thing which i believe was about <laughs> dots being weak uh, yeah, I can. The, the other fifth thing, I guess, and, sure, and yeah. Rivens actually brought this up yesterday, which I agreed with a ton, is there's a, a few talents in here that are buffing our filler spells. And I think that's just a super risky, dangerous thing to buff. So, like, there's like Rotten Wither or Monomania in the tree that both increase effectively the value of Mind Flay or Mind Seer. And just like rotationally, those spells can cause issues where it's like, well, now those filler spells start competing with other parts of our kit and so i think just you know anytime you're buffing those spells it's a little scary like right now on, on you know mathematically or in sims the talents are pretty crap but if they were to buff them to make them relevant it's super dank because we could just be sitting there pressing mind flay over and over and over again as our single target rotation so yeah i don't, I don't want to <laughs> like to remove anything buffing flay and seer as a talent so yeah i think that's also interesting as well when talking about other classes and things they've added and removed where channeled abilities have been brought up multiple times both with like hunters yesterday and convoked where it's like dude channeling spells just kind of doesn't feel great and like shadow priest i think is the only class in the game that constantly spams filler channel. channels even though it's yeah. like kind of its own thing and it's always been there you're just, just saying you definitely don't want the power to be in that i know they just they buffed the hell out of mind seer i think uh, was that yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, like, it, oh, I as long that. as they remain a filler in our rotation, doesn't really matter, right? Because it's just like, oh, when you have absolutely nothing else to do, you press this, right? Which is cool. I mean, it means you, know, you have some value in, like, predicting or, like, moving in advance and stuff, and players can get rewarded for that. But when it becomes better than potentially Mind Blast or Void Bolt or other spells in our kit, that's where, you know, that's that's dangerous, so... All right, cool. So one thing to try, one thing to tie into it as well is like the um, when you have these talents like they buff mind stuff. Just talked to a public about it a little yesterday. It's like yeah, it, it's you don't want them to be you don't want them to be a filler of at the end of the day, right? Which is very obvious, and you can do that by tuning. But one very problematic thing with uh, the void from thing again with void bolts is the fact that you're not pressing this inside cooldowns. So every single talent that buffs mind flay becomes a non-button in fact like in, inside CDs, and it sucks. The void bolts you're pressing mind flay. That's again on the dummies like yeah, I pay attention to my cast. I'm pressing mind sir, mind flay. You're pressing these buttons inside CDs when you have Void Bolt. So a lot of the talents that are effectively dead and just really awful designs suddenly 
become like decent. And and, and two of those mind flight talents you currently have to pick because they're in your way of other things. Yeah. So like you're picking things that buff your fillers, and then you don't even care about those as talents in the, in your cooldown window, which is where most of your damage is anyway. So what specifically two nodes are those? Just to be the mono, last thing. Mono Monomania and the Void Touch one right after it. So Monomania, channeling mind flay and mind seer, and then damnation or the void, void vo touch. Void touch. Well, yeah. not in, has a five percent chance. Okay, and then so you're like, taking that just to get to void torrent or through void torrent. Right, because you need to pick up void torrent to get to the idol, the two idols at the bottom. Right, yeah. so you're like you have to buff mind flay to get to those idols. So there's no other way to get there. Right, so that can definitely yeah. be solved with pathing because this 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 For tree sure. is like I, I think this might be like the least connected tree from the second row down than maybe any yeah, other. Yeah, they're gonna change this. Like it's it's pretty blatant. They're they, they're looking at this, you know. Yeah. All right. Cool. So. All right. So that was it. I think I think we're uh I think we're good. Kind of went over everything. We already had a talk before, which had, went much more in depth, uh, right after they came out and. They said they're looking at it, whether it's next week or the week after. We'll probably just have another call to uh, talk about the changes and kind of review. Hopefully not as much as Hunters, because like, <laughs> I, like I, I, we did a talk with Hunters yesterday and we're about to do one right after this because I, before I could even post a YouTube video, they just changed and fixed literally everything we talked about. So. Uh, must be nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's that's a good thing. Like, I don't want to I'm not I don't want to shit on anyone. Right. Like, but whatever those devs are doing is is good. And we, we like the direction of other specs. And all we're saying is, can we just take those lessons you're learning and put them here? So. Yep. Awesome. All right. Thanks for the talk, guys. Cool. Thanks, man. Yep. See, see you guys.